I heard someone come back to me after they saw you and they said that they that you told them they were not a candidate for mandibular skeletal expansion because they didn't have any crowding on their lower teeth. So who's really a candidate for mandibular expansion and what does teeth crowding have to do with it? So Ron, the, uh, this is the candidate. This is the patient that is a great candidate, a lot of crowding, all right? That answers the question. But then you notice that I did this also on this patient. So profile of this patient, look at this. So if you look at the profile of this patient, he doesn't have significant bimaxillary protrusion. So this patient that I mentioned to you, that young fellow and young, young guy from New York that came to Seattle for, you know, upon your you know, recommendation to do the MMA, he didn't have, he had crowding like this, but this is crowded. He has a little bit of mandibular dentoalveolar protrusion. Mm -hmm. So you don't see that much of crowding, but they need to have some crowding to expand the mandible. Because if you don't, the, you know, the mandible, uh, actually the dentition is going to get uh, deficient. So I want you to pay attention to this, uh, Ron. Look at the lower one, does not have that much of crowding a little bit, but look at his lower lip is sticking out and he doesn't have chin mm -hmm. because he has mandibular dentoalveolar protrusion, which is masking the crowding. So the per person that you know you mentioned to me probably didn't have even this. So those are more complex. Those are the ones that we can create crowding in the mandible first. It requires a little bit of more preparation. It's a little bit longer process to create crowding in the mandible before we start this. On the severe cases, I, we are able to do this, but at the same time, uh, patient needs to have some you know, level of crowding or teeth are sticking out and we bring them over the bone. We call it uh, dentoalveolar protrusion to be able to do this effectively. So anyone can become a candidate for DAME if you create the crowding using Invisalign for let's say six months before treatment starts. Yes. So let's go back to one more thing. Okay. So uh, you referred uh, another, you know, patient came from the, you know, jaw hacks that, uh, she, you know, she is a uh, actually very sophisticated ENT surgeon with no joint, with no condyle. They use another appliance, unfortunately, melt on the condyle, but she didn't have any, she had four by extractions. So, and, you know, didn't have severe sleep apnea. Run. To answer your question, in patients like that, we can open up the space, but requires to put four bicuspids back with implants. All right? Can we justify put 20 grand of the implants back in the patient's mouth when they are young, when the sleep apnea is not severe? So case to case is different. So patient doesn't have crowding, even with this. All right. Mm -hmm. If I ex if the sleep apnea is very severe, all right, run. I can expand the mandible and put four extra teeth back, extra teeth. Instead of having two of these bicuspids, I can have three bicuspids. I have done it before. You've right? done that. You've you've opened up extraction spaces using maxillary expansion. I've never seen that. Yes, I've I'll never. Okay. I've never yeah. seen a, a doctor do a MSE and Dame and then uh, add four teeth back. I have done it. 